Hey guys, I'm so excited to introduce you to my next guest. He has a website called the Dallas Sports Academy and his name is Stephen Horwitz. And we're going to talk about how to get ready for a fitness competition with using intermittent fasting. So welcome, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, Chantel. So tell people a little bit about them, about yourself who don't already know you. I am a chiropractor by training, so a DC, a doctor of chiropractic, uh, went to Cornell University and then chiropractic school, and then got very much into the fitness, powerlifting, weight training world, Uh, went to the Olympics as part of the United States Olympic team's medical staff in 1996, Uh, been the chairman of a state council, the Maryland State Council on Fitness, so I've always tried to combine the injury care and the and the fitness and the nutrition uh, with my patients and clients. Okay, so let's talk about, let's pretend that someone wants to get ready for a fitness competition. They're already doing intermittent fasting. They're eating in, say, an eight-hour window or even a six-hour window, but they don't want to give that up. They've gotten great results doing that, but now they really need to kind of dial it in and they we want to get ready for a fitness competition. What does that nutrition look like? Like, let's let's say they were going to eat an eight-hour window. Let's talk about, let's talk about a woman. Maybe, um, let's talk. I mean, I just saw a girl who was. She had just posted a picture. She was fifty years old, a woman, and she looked amazing. And she was like, "This." It was her first fitness competition. She was at fifty years old, and she just posted pictures, and she looked amazing. So how how would someone do that? What would their diet need to look like? I think the first thing is the power of that eight hour window. So by taking everything that you eat and compressing it into an eight hour window, what we know is that you're probably going to get better results than if you spread it out over time. Now that said, if we take that specifically, that 50 year old woman, I've done so many diet diaries and, uh, I guess, fortunately, I'm, I'm old enough to go way back before computers and doing the diet diaries by hand and looking at food before there were truly proper labels. And one thing that I found from doing so many diet diaries on so many people is that with women, it's almost never, I'm trying to think if I've ever had a woman walk into the office and when we do a diet diary, the woman is eating enough protein. So I think making sure that your protein is is high. And by high, I I, I mean considerable. You know, we're talking about a gram, at least a gram per kilogram, and and that's low. The recent research is you're really 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So I'll repeat that 1.6. So can you do it? Let's do it. Right? Let's do it instead of kilograms. Can we do it in pounds? So like, a let's gram, just pretend. A gram per pound. So let's just so say someone starting out was at 150 pounds just to make it easy. You know, some people, if you do know your lean mass and you've had your body mass tested, you could do a gram per pound of lean body mass or you could do straight away a gram per pound. So if you're a 150 pound person, you could do 150 grams of protein. And then we have to dial in a little deeper about the type of protein. And we have to get a little bit into the weeds with regards to amino acids. There's a particular amino acid called leucine. And if you're choosing to do a, a vegetarian or vegan style diet, diet then you really have to look look your foods up and make sure that you're getting enough leucine. It's not, I wanna be very clear on this, it's not that you can't get enough protein if you're on a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet, but you're gonna to have to eat significantly more protein to get the amino acid profile. So now digging just a touch deeper, why leucine, why is that important? There's something called muscle, protein synthesis. And you need about two and a half to three grams of the amino acid leucine to kind of turn on that light switch. So muscle protein synthesis, the ability of the body to use the protein to build the muscle. That makes sense. 
So in, other, in order to turn that light switch on, if we eat protein, but we don't get that two and a half grams of leucine in that amount of protein that we're eating at one time, then we're not gonna turn the switch on. So it becomes more just calories as opposed to building that muscle switch. Hey guys, I have some exciting news. You can now on your podcast app, download the Waste Away book. And here's what it is. You will literally get to listen to this on audio. We just had a girl that said she had listened to the book on audio three times. She lost a little bit of weight when she read the book. After she listened to the book three times, she ended up losing an additional 20 pounds. So if you do it, you can just listen to your podcast app. It's just $5. Check the show notes and get it now. So, okay. So for people, yep. for people who don't know what leucine is, it's, it's a nutritionally essential branched chain amino acid. So BAA, um, and it's probably one of the most abundant amino acids in high quality protein. Would you agree? Um, it is, but for instance, you'll have to consume 30 to 40% more leucine if you're choosing to go vegan style plant-based based proteins. So for instance, you'll get about two and a half grams of leucine in 25 to 30 grams of whey protein, but you're going to need 40 to 45 grams of a plant base of a hemp based protein to get the same two and a half grams of leucine, if that makes sense. And I, and I encourage people to read the labels because there's so many different versions. If they do go vegan or vegetarian, there's so many different plant based, you know, there's pea protein, there's hemp protein, there's rice protein. So there's so many different plant-based proteins, you really have to do your homework to get into the weeds that if you do want to compete, and this is for competition, right? This is, this is taking lifestyle one step more for competition. If you, if you do want to go that far, you owe it to yourself to do homework. So I just want to be clear that you can do it vegan or vegetarian, but you have to read and take it. So if you, if someone was going to get 150 grams of protein in Explain to me where they, like, what would you, if you were going to describe a diet that someone was going to get in, where would you put that in? Like, are you talking about, like, try to be as specific as possible. Like, I would suggest, you know, this much egg, egg whites, or what would their day look like to get that kind of protein? Well, I can give Let's you- Let's say they were going to eat from 11 to 7, so it was like an eight-hour window. Right. So my day, um, I'm going to eat four to six eggs, the entire egg, not just the egg whites. I never get rid of the yolks. The yolks are really, really important in my opinion. So you never want to get rid of the, the uh, yolks. So I'll eat four to six eggs. I'll have four to six ounces of salmon. I'll have a couple of slices of bacon um, later in the day. I, I, I function better and, and I do want to be clear because, again, there's just so much uh, almost anger between those who want to go kind of carnivore, eat more meat in the, in the vegan. We want everybody to be healthy. So whether you choose to eat meat, if you do choose to eat meat, I choose to eat meat because I do blood work. I, I base my performance. So it's my metrics, my performance. I've always felt better my entire life on lots of red meat. So what does that look like for me? I eat a little more than a pound of red meat. So it could be uh, beef, bison, um, lamb um, a day. So, and then um, I have certain uh, GI things make it a little more complicated. I've had some very uh, extensive surgery at age 50. Uh, so back 10 years ago almost. And um, um, I have what's called an esophagectomy. So I choose to... Uh, supplement with some whey protein. Um, so I'll do, uh, for instance, what I did this morning, I did a hardcore weight training uh, in the morning. So I did deadlifts, I did a lot of kettlebell swings. Um, and then I went right to 40 grams of uh, whey protein with some uh, creatine monohydrate. Um, so that's what, that's what my window would look like. So I, I'm getting at least uh, 200 grams of protein. I'm about 170 pound man right now. So I'm taking in from 200 to 250 grams of protein per day. And I've really dialed this in for Steve Horwitz. So I'm, I'm not suggesting that this is perfect for other people, but I am suggesting that you do need a lot more protein than what you need, especially as a woman. 
and especially as a person over 40 and most certainly 50. So if we're talking about a 50 year old woman and let's say she needs 150 50 grams of protein that you're saying we're talking about someone who's looking at getting into a competition now yep. um but let's say she had because one egg is about six grams of protein correct one egg is about six grams you know one ounce so she had is four, about five grams so four eggs yep that's, that, that's that would good. give her 24, 24 grams in the morning that would give her 24 grams you know i'd like to see her be able to i'd like to see each protein we'll call it a feeding I'd like to see each protein feeding above 30 grams to make okay. sure that you're getting enough leucine. So maybe we make it five eggs. Maybe we choose an additional, maybe we add a little cottage cheese. We, we um, take an additional protein source. Okay. And then, so then would you say maybe having a protein shake that had like 30 grams of protein in it would be another? Yeah, 30 to 40 grams. Again, whether you're, you know, if it's a whey-based protein, you'll be able to do 30 grams. If it's a plant-based protein, you're probably going to need 40 to 45 grams. Again, do your homework. Look for those leucine numbers. Now, are you a fan of like having oatmeal in the morning or? So, no, I, I, I'm very careful with my carbohydrates. So the way I choose carbohydrate, um, I've done a lot of reading and follow a lot of really smart people. And I've tried to dial it in for me as, as close as possible. So I'm very fond of using a glucose meter. If you can get your hands on a what's called a CGM, a continuous glucose meter, those are kind of pricey. Um, you use those for 14 days. You know, you pop out here, right here. It's, it's on you for 14 days. So you really know what's going on. But you can go to CVS or any drugstore and buy an inexpensive or Amazon, buy an inexpensive glucose monitor and take your morning blood sugar and then take your blood sugar after you eat a food and a, a carbohydrate. So let's take rice. How does your body respond to rice? And I think this is super important for people. I've done it with so many people and it's very powerful. I know how my body responds to rice, but I can't say that rice is good for you or not good for you until I know what does your body say 30 minutes after you eat it? 60 minutes after you eat it, 90 minutes after you eat it, and two hours after you eat it. You want a nice rise and then a nice fall. So by the two hour mark, you're basically back to your morning fasted blood glucose. So you'll eat it, you're not going up much above 130, 140, and then you're coming back down over that two hour interval to your resting glucose, which should hopefully be you know somewhere 75 to you know, not quite 90. And if you, then you realize, oh my gosh, when I eat that bread, my blood sugar spikes. Or when I eat the rice or oatmeal, my blood sugar spikes. So I don't like to say like most articles, this is a good food. I only know what's good for you. And I, I'm not concerned with what's good for me. I don't say Steve Horwitz's diet is everybody's diet. I want to know how foods work for you and let's dial it in. If you want to go more, quote, meat-based, great. If you want to go more vegetarian, vegan, great. Let's dial it in for your body. And mm. so we know. Very powerful. I love that. I love that. I actually did. I actually got one of those continuous blood glucose monitors. I've leased one for like two weeks just to kind of do it for fun. Because you're right. They are kind of expensive. But now that I look at it, I wish I would have just bought it. Um, cause I think you can get them for like 800, like $800. Have, where have you seen them? Yeah, they're pricey. Yeah. They're, they're mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I, I haven't really even priced it out cause that's what, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I've seen them for six, seven, eight hundred dollars And then, you know, you're paying for the sticky things also. Yikes. It's, it's still kind of pricey. I'm hoping somebody will, will figure out a way to knock it down uh, quite a bit. But you can get the information, you know, it's a little bit of a pain because you're sticking your fingers with a regular glucose monitor. But if you just do your homework over a couple of weeks, you'll know. I mean, the CGM is great. You get tremendous data because then you start to see, wow, I didn't sleep well. Boom. You know, my blood sugar goes up. Wow, I'm under stress. Boom. My blood sugar goes up. So it really teaches you to manage your lifestyle in a much broader degree than just nutrition. 
So that's why the CGM is super powerful because there's so many things outside of food that affect your blood glucose readings. But as, as far as food goes, if you just buy the inexpensive uh, regular glucose monitor and you don't mind sticking your fingers, uh, you know, three, four, five, six times a day um, for, for a couple of weeks. And they are more accurate. Of, yeah, you get, you get some very accurate data. You, you really, you know, I've had a lot of patients go, gosh, I love rice, but it really spikes my blood sugar. Well, now we know, and my job is to educate you and to make recommendations. My job is not to tell you, well, you got to do this. I believe in the hashtag take ownership, right? You got to take ownership in your own health. So if I show you that rice via glucose monitor spikes your blood sugar, your decision, I love rice. Well, do you want to compete or not? You know, for me, I, w I like to compete. I like to do really well. I can still bring it home. Uh, I'll, I'll be 60 in August. I, I can still, still really bring it. And, and I love being able to do that. And the only reason I can, I don't have some kind of Olympian genetics. I really have dialed it in for me. And I, I guess that's the message that would be the most important that I leave with people is you want to go vegan, carnivore. Most people are going to be somewhere in between that because those are two very much extremes. But dial it in for you. Really dial it in for you. Do your homework. Hey guys, I want you to know what I've been doing for my health that is absolutely transforming it. I'm taking massive amounts of vitamin C. Now, it's not just the regular vitamin C. This is 100% natural and it only contains natural sources, whole foods like amla berry, camu camu berry, uh, cherry. So it's literally just ground up fruits and massive amounts and it delivers 750% of your daily recommended vitamin C. So I literally double it and I have just seen so many benefits. So go to ChantelRayWay.com slash vitamin C to get yours today. Yeah. And if someone is interested in getting that, I think the best brand out there is called Dexcom. It's D-E-X-C-O-M. And they're making them where they're, they're starting to make them where they're cheaper and cheaper. And they are getting them where they can have an app on your iPhone. I mean, they're, yes. they're really kind of, bringing it in. So let's just say someone wants to do it the regular way. Let's talk about those numbers one more time. Let's pretend that they're 70, between 70 and 80 before they eat, like their fasting glucose is between 70 be and 80. Yeah. Just tell their numbers of after they eat at this point and then after they eat, you know, two hours later, what should those numbers be? Yeah, so so there's a fellow named Joseph Kraft and what he actually used was insulin and he did almost 15,000 patients. So the two hour response I'm talking about should actually be insulin numbers, but we really can't get those without going to a lab, you know, all day long, uh, every day. So um, insulin would be a better, um, how do I say it, a better early warning system because your insulin numbers will go awry before your blood glucose numbers will go awry. That being said, the indicator that's available to most of us is the blood glucose monitor. So if you are in that wonderful, gosh, if you could be 70, 80, 85 in the morning fasted, that would be great. As long as you're not spiking above, you know, depending on who you read, certainly not more than 140, preferably 120 or 130 by the 30 minute to one hour mark, right? So you take it, uh, you, you could do it uh, 45 minutes and two hours, but it would be great if you could do it at 30 minutes, at 60 minutes, because by 60 minutes, you should have hit that peak. So the peak, let's say, we'll call it 130, 60 minutes. So you don't want it to go higher than 130 at the 60 minute mark, and then you want it to drop back down. So 90 minute mark, you know, you're down to 105, and then boom, at two hours, you're back to your, you know, 80. So after two hours, whatever you started with, you should be back, back to. to it. Yep. And anything, if it spikes, so there's different types of curves that Dr. Kraft discovered, you know, it can spike way high. It can spike way high earlier or later. It can go too low, right? So you can go underneath your resting, your, your morning number. So it can be all over the place. And anything other than what we just described 
would be an aberrant, an abnormal, not right type of glucose. So, you know, then you're, then we, we talk about, well, are you pre-diabetic? Well, pre-diabetic means diabetes, right? I mean, there's no such thing as pre-diabetic. And, you know, is my tire pressure, it's supposed to be 40, is it 39? Well, it's low, you may not feel it, but I guarantee you that if Mario Andretti was driving the car, he'd feel it because he's a race car driver. So how, how good is your warning system? So you wanna try to develop the best warning system and, and that's why you need to dial it into yourself. So one of the, I'm really big on blood sugar. And so my, my friends give me a hard time, but we do these, like anytime it's, a, it's one of our girlfriend's birthday, we always kind of go out to lunch. And so one of the things I do for fun is I have my own blood glucose monitor and I have different strip, you know, different things for everyone. And I'll be like, okay, it's time for us to check everyone's oh, blood sugar. Tough. So I awesome. literally go around and I check everyone's blood sugar. And then right after we eat, I do it again um, just to see where, where everyone is. And I will tell you the skinniest women at the table are the ones who they start at the lowest blood sugar level. And when they're done eating, their blood sugar level is the lowest. And so it's really interesting to watch it. I think I might record it one time because they're all like, Oh gosh, here comes Chantel with her blood glucose monitor. I think that would be wonderful because you need a metric. You need, you do need a tool. We do want to try to simplify it, but if we simplify it too much, it becomes so inaccurate. I think that's awesome. That would be a great video. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I want to do that. I think I'm going to call all the girls together and just say, hey, we're going to do a lunch. And they always think, they always laugh when I do it, but it's- Maybe Dexcom will send you a bunch of CGMs for that. Call them, right? I know, right? <laughs> that would be, you know, I think if they realize, wow, this is a tool that, you know, the average person, frankly, should be using on a regular basis. It's not that you should live with a CGM on you all the time. At least some people are data people. Maybe engineers would love to live with the CGMs on them all the time. For me, as long as I get data, you know, once or twice a year, I think is enough as long as I know that I'm sticking with what I should be doing, that I know what works for it. But if I go off the beaten path, maybe that reading will say, hey, Steve, you're off the beaten path. Let's get back on the path. Now, do you feel like the amount of protein that you're eating and if your people are really improving their protein amount, that it helps with satiety? I think for some people it does. Um, I'm an on the table kind of guy, so I'm gonna tell you, I can eat four eggs, three pieces of bacon, and five ounces of salmon. And since I just tra- I trained hard this morning, I, it does not give me a feeling of satiety. So I don't want people to be bummed out, but that's just me, and I I, I just manage it. You know, that's why I'm very careful with my carbs. Um, I lean toward the carnivore world because I eat a lot of meat and eggs and salmon, but I do carefully. Uh, take in carbohydrates for me that looks like a hundred, maybe as high as 150 grams on a hard training day. So that will look like a sweet potato or acorn squash. I know those two things don't make my blood sugar go off the beaten path. And it kind of calms me down and, and gives me, if I, for me, if I combine a heavy meat meal with that little bit of sweet potato, then I get more of that feeling of satiety. Whereas when I talk to other people, if they eat the quote, good fat, like the, um, you know, the entire egg, for instance, they can eat four or five eggs and feel completely satisfied. So there's all kinds of different, you know, stats for how much the average American consumes sugar. I think I've seen some that say 17 teaspoons per day. Some say, you know, 20 teaspoons a day. You know, there's just all kinds of different data out there of how much sugar people are consuming. Can you give us, I know for me personally, that is a big one. I love sugar. And so it's always a struggle for me to try to limit how much sugar I'm eating. Do you have any kind of easy hacks where you say, here's some things I've done that help you kind of hack that desire to cut that sugar intake out of your diet? I think number one, the the go-to is always going to be add protein. 
because the research is really um, clear. There's a Canadian researcher that people can look up, Stuart Phillips. Um, he's an amazing guy. You can follow him on Twitter. Um, what I love about Twitter is all these researchers will publish, will, will throw in their tweets their most recent studies. So you can literally stay on, on the cusp of the most recent research by following the right people. And if you want to follow protein, uh, Donald Lehman, Dr. Donald Lehman, L-A-Y-M-A-N, and Dr. Stuart Phillips are two great people. Um, but the research shows that the, uh, you know, you need more protein. Uh, for most people, it will give you more of a feeling of satiety. And the beautiful thing about protein is if you add more grams of protein, you can be, have more grams than you may, or more total calories eating that extra protein. If you push your total calories more than, you know, what you quote burn, you know, the calories in calories out folks, um, protein will not make you gain weight. You, know, you can get away with 20, 30, 40, 50, maybe even a hundred grams of protein. So times four, right. Uh, in terms of calories, you can get 200 to 400 ca additional calories in a day and you'll be, you'll be lean. So I would make my first hack more protein. My second hack would be getting the good fats in. So eating more eggs with the yolks. That would definitely be my second hack. Uh, my third hack would be um, uh, more magnesium for most people, you know, uh, getting a, a magnesium glycinate. Um, that seems to be the most popular magnesium lately in terms of absorption. There's different, there's different uh, magnesiums, but I find that one, at least for me and, and my patients to be uh, the best. So adding the magnesium can kind of cut on those cravings as well. So those would be. So why do you think hacks. that magnesium glycinate helps with the sugar cravings? I'm going to let the researchers, you know, go into the weeds with, with that one. I, I am definitely not the, the best one. What, what I can tell you is that for most people, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm, I just blanked on her name. It'll come to me. Uh, but most people are deficient in magnesium. And if you, since magnesium is involved in hundreds and hundreds of chemical reactions of, in the human body, they'll find that magnesium will, will cut those cravings down. Uh, pretty dramatically. Hey guys, I don't know about you, but if you are just feeling so tired throughout the day and just feeling restless at night, then I want you to try something called Energy Bits. Each package is has spirulina or chlorella algae. They're plant-based and they have zero sugar, 40 nutrients, five grams of protein. And so you are gonna feel great taking them. So go to energybits.com and then you'll get 20% off if you put the promo code code Chantel. That's C-H-A-N-T-E-L. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that magnesium helps in regulating your glucose and your insulin. Absolutely. And yeah. so because it helps with that, then you're not having some of those high spikes. So then as soon as like that spike goes up and then it starts coming down, that's when you're like, you know, I feel like I need something else sweet. Is well, that's why the CGM, the continuous glucose monitors are so great because you learn what works for you. And by doing that, you know, you're not seeing this, hopefully on the CGM, you know, that sine wave is getting smaller and smaller. So you're able to modulate that. And once you're able to modulate that, that's the ultimate hack, right? Once you're able to not be spiking all over the place, almost all the time, I can't think of a time where somebody hasn't said that their cravings are, are less or gone if they're not spiking all over the place. So the right. ultimate hack is just taking everything that we've discussed, putting it together, saying, oh, wow, the, you know, I'm, I'm not craving. Now that said, I love dark chocolate. So I always have a couple of squares, maybe sometimes more than a couple of squares of dark chocolate a day. And I mean, 85% dark chocolate. Awesome. And let's talk a little bit about um, kind of how, what else you're doing as far as your diet goes. So protein is a real big one. Um, what else are you looking at for your diet? So uh, again, I'm, I'm looking at the total grams of protein for me, then because I eat eggs, because I eat salmon or sardines, because I eat the meat, you know, I'm getting 
what I say are good fats. There will be, you know, unfortunately the vegan vegetarian community does not agree with the saturated fat part. And there's a bunch of lipidologists who will, will frown at this, but that's okay. Um, you know, there's plenty of research. You can find research on both sides of the table. So I'm, I'm focused on getting enough uh, good fats. So I have no problem with bacon. You know, I, I do limit it to about three strips a day, um, almost every day, but not quite every day. And then, like I said, I'm, I'm being very careful on my carbohydrate sources uh, to make sure that they're optimal. I don't want to go too little because then I feel I don't feel well. Um, and I don't sleep well. And to me, sleep is the best recovery tool. There's no more important recovery tool than sleep. I would rate sleep even more important than nutrition. I, I don't like to rate them like that because then, oh, he said sleep is more important than nutrition. Yes, I just did say that. They're both important. So you got to dial in both. Uh, but for me, I know uh, it doesn't matter. I, if I don't sleep, I'm not recovered. And then that's going to screw up my glucose. So you can see where this is all related because again the blood glucose is not just related to the nutrition so for me and i figured this out for me that i have to prioritize sleep over everything so i think that's another way that's probably you know the number four hack to cravings is maybe get enough sleep as well as what does my diet look like that that makes the absorption that makes how my body utilizes all this food that much better now, are you really focused so much on your protein and really looking at that? Or are you actually counting your macros and kind of looking, okay, how much protein am I getting? How much fat am I getting? How much carbs am I eating? Yeah, like I said, I'm not an engineer, but I do like to use, so I'll use, um, what is it called? Chronometer. There's a bunch of easy apps, um, but I'm not logging in my food every day. I, I do not choose to live my life like that, but Every couple of months, yeah, let's do a couple of days. Let's log it in. Let's make sure I'm on the right path. Let me look at my training. Let me look at where I am. Absolutely. So I'm not too concerned with macros. My, my, my biggest concern is quality food. So all the beef is local beef, you know, um, that, that kind of thing. Although we're so fortunate, we have a friend who has chickens, so we get chickens from Texas. And, uh, you know, right here and, you know, they eat insects, not, not grains. So, you know, the food is, is pretty darn good. Spend a lot, a lot more money on making sure that our food is good. Uh, and, and that, that to me makes all the difference in the world is the quality of the food, uh, comes first. I'm not, I'm not too worried about my macros, but I, in my opinion, I think it's a good idea for everybody to get an idea of what their macros are just not necessarily live their lives by it. Got it. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Um, I'm on uh, social media. So on Twitter, I'm at Dr. Horwitz. So Dr. Horwitz. I'm on Instagram, um, Facebook. Uh, it's DallasSportsAcademy.com. And then uh, my email is just my name, Dr. Stephen Horwitz at Gmail. I'm I'm happy to take emails. Uh, I love talking to people about this. And I just leave, love seeing that smile of success. Like, wow, I learned something. I got it down. And look at these great results. There's nothing better than the smile when somebody gets the results. Of their awesome. Well, if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantalRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Simpronto Media Production.